Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to the correct views. Sam I B. Deganji reporting for the Media Speaks, and guys, we have a rather large show planned for you today. First of all, I want to say happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Absolutely everyone. Thank you very much. I know you're very busy during this season, and here it is Thanksgiving morning at 4.30 in the morning, and you've tuned into this show. Um... I also want to give a shout out to uh, the Wounded Warrior Project, who this is brought to you in part by. Um, I've been meaning to say that for a very long time. Wounded Warriors, awesome, awesome people. Guys, listen to this, especially for those of you, and I'm wearing my official Walmart shirt. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm going to shop on Black Friday. Why? Because I'm working Thanksgiving. The other DJ is working on Christmas. We traded. I don't have a problem with people that wish to work Christmas. Um, I'm not in favor of these places that are wanting to fire you if you do not work Christmas. Is Kmart doing that? Yes, they are. And see, let me tell you something. Thanksgiving and Christmas, they do matter to some of us. Like you'll say, well, you know, I... I believe in America and liberty, and I can say, screw your God. <laughs> you can. You can say it all you want to. I'm also allowed to worship my God. And to take that away from someone is a bit much. Now, I do understand you have the Islamic holidays that go on forever. You've got the Jewish holidays. It seems like every other week is a Jewish holiday. I understand where at some point that could become a problem. But there are some traditional holidays that mean a lot to us. If the traditions don't mean anything, do you then by all means work it? By all means work it. I'm, I'm not saying it should be illegal. Um, since I'm going to be getting off work at 2.30 in the morning, the store, I, I work in a club that's near a mall. On the way home, I just buy something, not because I'm part of the masses, but because I'm already awake. If uh, stores were open at that time all the time, I would shop there. I don't shop Walmart, so that doesn't count. But I'm not changing my lifestyle to shop on Black Friday. I'm already up. Um, TheGuardian.com. Uh, Public Eye, a counter event to the World Economic Forum, nominated the company for its lifetime award as workers around the world protest Walmart's wage treatments of workers. I love this story. Walmart workers in 10 countries joined a global day of action on Wednesday to demand better wages and treatment for employees as a public interest group and nominated for the retailer for a lifetime award as the worst corporation in the world. Now, I know a lot of you are going to say that this, you know, they shouldn't have to pay very much because they're just baggers. They're just fruit people. Well, let me tell you what Walmart does. Walmart Let's say that Walmart is not in this area here, this microphone right here. You, I don't know if you can see it or not, but this microphone right here. There's nobody in this area, but there's people over here where my hand is, and they're making, um, I don't know, we don't make anything in America anymore, so I have to paraphrase. They've got uh, Nancy's Hut of Music, and she sells everything from Top 40, Lloyd Usher, Nickelback Garbage, to really good music like Assemblage 23. And um, Walmart says, well, we're a big corporation. So what we can do is we can go ahead and buy in thousands, hundreds of thousands of loads of these CDs and sell them for cheaper than Nancy and this little microphone person over here. We can shut both of them out of business and then particularly true in small communities, those employees, those former owners of stores, will have to work for us. Then we won't pay them very much. The taxpayers, <clears throat> that is to say the people that shop at Walmart, the taxpayers will pay the difference in the low prices that Walmart gave them. They'll make up for it in higher taxes for welfare that Walmart is causing. And it 
make no mistake about it, Walmart is big enough to make a substantial dent in the welfare system with the amount of people who work there that have to go on welfare. They like to say that their uh, wages bring people out of poverty. How poor must they have had to have been if Walmart appeared to be a good job? Meanwhile, the family is making billions with a B. Do you have any idea how many people making minimum wage <clears throat> giving up one billion dollars? Do you have any idea if you were just to give that billion dollars back to your employees that even with the massive number of employees that they have, do you have any idea what a boon that would be to them? It would be like jackpot to all of them. But no, they'll rake in billions and never once think of this at all. It says, organizers <clears throat> with the group All Our Walmart estimated that about 300 protesters would, that's it? 300 protesters would march on Walmart's headquarters in India and block the gate. Another 200 people were expected to protest at the company's headquarters in Mexico City. Workers in Argentina, Brazil, and Canada were also expected to participate. In the U.S., despite steady rain, workers gathered in Miami at 1 p.m. local time outside Walmart's Latin American headquarters. Turnout was about half of the expected 100, and that is why, that is why right there, they needed to have a lot more people out there than that. I mean, it says, let's face it. These people here, they, they listen to this, just listen to this. This is why I'm leading with this story. We'll get to the Ferguson, we'll get to the burning, the, we'll get to all of it, I promise. We're on the heels of Black Friday here, and I'm trying to show you why you don't want to shop at Walmart. This isn't Sam's opinion. These are facts that I'm reading to you. Do you want to support people that do these kinds of things that I'm showing you as facts? It says, I'm standing with protesters all over the world today to send a message to Walmart and Waltons that we need better pay, says Emily Wells, one of the protesters. Wells makes $9.50 an hour and relies on food stamps to make ends meet. She's working. She's working hard, probably, as every hour she can get. As the richest family in America, they are, and one of the richest in the world, they are, we all know that the Waltons can afford to pay $15 an hour to the workers that make them richer every day. The Walton family, which descended from founder Sam Walton, who I understand wasn't like this, and owns more than half of Walmart, is worth about $145 billion. That means that they could give away $25 billion that would prevent you and I, Joe Taxpayer, from having to pay them. But no, you shop at Walmart and you support these gluttonous swines, and then you pay more than that in taxes. And you're too dumb to see it. I know what you're doing. You're skipping ahead to the Ferguson News, and you're supporting the very thing that is making you destitute. So yeah, they're in line to win like the worst person award ever. It also, like I said, you've also got to remember you've got Kmart out there, as I've already said, saying that they're going to fire anyone that doesn't come to work on Thanksgiving. These, 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 are, these are the places that you're going to make rich with your money. This is what you want to do. Listen to this. Walmart workers plan Black Friday strike. Let me tell you something. I don't believe it. Not a word of it. Why? Look up uh, the correct views. Black Friday Walmart. I went to the store. None, none, zero zilch of the employees were striking or protesting anything. That is why the system, the Walton system there continues to hose these people because they do not stand up for themselves. This is from Ned Riz Rizenhoff from Al Jazeera. For the third Black Friday, running America's largest retailer is expected to face a labor protest at locations across the country. Workers and supporters affiliated with the union-backed labor campaign R at Walmart says this Friday will be the biggest strike yet. Well, considering that there was no strike in most of the stores prior, that won't take a lot of doing. Our Walmart, why can I not say that today? 
first burst onto the scene about two years ago when it used Black Friday, the biggest shopping day of the year, to launch an unprecedented nationwide strike against Wally World. The group originally demanded that Walmart pay all employees a salary at least $25,000 per year, but that has since joined with striking fast food workers demanding at least $15 an hour. Twenty-five, I can see it, but that seems a bit much. Fifteen an hour, that seems a bit low. I mean, yeah, I mean, at the very least you can pay when you... $145 billion. I mean, I'm not saying we need to pass a law against Walmart. I'm saying don't be stupid. Don't go there. Don't make me waste my time talking into this camera. See how vile they are and stop supporting them. Stop your taxes going up for welfare because Walmart is one of the biggest employers in the country and they're the reasons that so many people are so, are, are so dependent upon welfare. It says, as with all our war, all, there I go again, our Walmart's first major action in 2012, this year's Black Friday protests will not be a typical strike. Many of those picketing Walmart, perhaps even most, will be outside supporters of our Walmart campaign, not store employees themselves. The point is, they would already have had what it is that they were hoping to achieve if they would do them in bigger numbers. I was very disappointed. I even encouraged people to go there and dislike the video. I was very disappointed by it. All right, guys, I know what you want. You want to hear about bloodshed. You want to hear about the color of people's skin. You don't want to hear about uh, families on Christmas and uh, Thanksgiving. No, <laughs> Thanksgiving. Uh, Christmas is it's short shopping season this year. Give me a break. You want to hear about races, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and give you the Ferguson update. For those of you that are tired of Ferguson, fear not. We have a lot of things that have nothing to do with Ferguson whatsoever. Um, I want to give a, a shout out to Jakari Jackson. If you don't know who he is, he is the gentleman that uh, beat me, Kyle, Court, and D Lake in the InfoWars contest to become one of their reporters. And I enjoy watching him, and I'll tell you why. Have you ever lost a promotion, a job hunt, a contest, or whatever, to somebody that you know is grossly less talented than you are? Have you ever had that happen? My band played this battle of the bands once that we got roped into. Never do that. And uh, there was this, like, band of kids that formed this really four chord punk band i think they knew four chords and two of them were wrong the drummer kind of knew what a beat was he just couldn't play it and i'm still not sure what the singer was doing but i hope he's okay they were obviously very well off judging by their gear and to make a long story short they paid for all of the tickets themselves gave them out to people that would make noise for them. And even though they won the contest, they lost money on the tickets, but it didn't matter. They were already rich. When you lose something like that, you just sort of... Ugh, you know what I mean? That was not the case with Jakari Jackson. When we lost that contest, and uh, all of those people I named, including myself, thankfully, were in the last 20 or so people. When I saw Jakari... I was delighted to have lost to him. He did a great job. Well, he happens to be a black man. <clears throat> and these thugs, hood, were out there. Say, watch the video. It's here on prisonplanet.com. Kit Daniels has it up. They were telling him that he wasn't black. Why? They were saying Al that Alex Jones was racist. He's racist? Do they even know that Alex Jones has been the one sticking up for the uh, posse comitatus, which says to not, uh, that the military cannot be allowed to be on the streets of America, that he's been in favor of allowing them to protest. He simply believes that Brown charged an officer and the officer had to shoot him, as I believe, and I'm not a racist either. Well, somehow they were calling Jakari Jackson, this reporter, uh, implying that he was a house nigga. And no, I'm not, it's not my phrasing, but you know what I mean. That's, that's what people say, and it's crappy, and that's why I'm saying it's a crappy term. But they were saying that he was, he, the Alex Jones sent his boy down. Let me tell you what. Jakari Jackson has done so much more for the human race, both black, white, Asian, Indian, and otherwise, the human race, than this mask thug could ever do. 
But <clears throat> I wanted to give a shout out. Go ahead and look it up. It's, uh, it's again, it's mass provocateurs confront and threaten reporter in Ferguson. And with that, we're going to go ahead into the news. Um, this is also Prison Planet Paul Joseph Watson. And again, the sticker's on the computer. I entered the contest. I am not affiliated with InfoWars at all time in any way. And I have a bunch of videos where I disagree with things that Alex said. So if you're new to the show, it, it's not what you're thinking. Questions are swirling over the unexplained murder of DeAndre Joshua, found dead in his car on Tuesday morning. With some speculating that the 20-year-old may have been the victim of retribution killing for testifying in front of the grand jury in the Michael Brown shooting case. In other words, they think the thugs <clears throat> should have allowed Michael Brown to go into the store, strong arm the owner, and I must be racist except for the fact that the owner is also a minority, strong arm the owner with his friend. His friend lies to him, creates an outrage in the city saying that uh, don't shoot hands up was what, uh, what Brown was doing when he was attacking the man trying to grab his gun. Because you told the truth, this 20-year-old DeAndre Joshua looks like a hero here. It looks like they killed him for what he did. All the facts on this are not in yet, so don't quote me as saying it for sure. I'm reporting it as I see it. It says uh, Joshua was found dead inside a parked car near Ferguson's Canfield Green Apartments around 9 a.m. Tuesday, just two blocks from where Brown was gunned down by Officer Darren Wilson. According to one resident, four individuals were overheard discussing plans to kill somebody on Monday night. <clears throat> well, yeah, I mean, don't don't bother to call the police when you hear that or anything and leave an anonymous tip. You know, we know who would want to do that. The New York Daily News reports with a link to it that Joshua's family is, quote, positive his death is tied to the demonstrations over a grand jury's decision not to indict Michael Brown's killer. So since this black man wasn't racist and testified to the truth of what Michael Brown did, the other black men killed this black man. So it's not about race, it's not about color. Are you seeing it now? Joshua was black. He was described as a good kid who was not into drugs or had a steady job. Well, then he must have been a sellout like Jakari Jackson, right? So tired of that. I have a lot, I, I have, and I hate to be one of these white people to go, I got friends that are black. My point is, I have a ton of friends that are black. Look up my zip code, 44703. You, 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 everywhere. You know what? There are black people that I would never associate with. There are white people that I would never associate with. There are black people I know that would not associate with the black people that I wouldn't associate with. So don't give me that BS. It says, DeAndre Joshua 20 fits the social profile of an eyewitness who gave police slash FBI statement and testified before the grand jury in the Mike Brown shooting case, writes conservative Treehouse blog, another link. He was an employed black male, or he, oh, they're, they're not going to like him, and no history of drug use or illicit behavior. Well, I guess, you know, then he couldn't have been black, right? I mean, that's, that's what they just said to Mr. Jackson. He was also a friend of Dorian Johnson, who is currently under protection. A Facebook post by Johnson, who was with Michael Brown at the time of the shooting, appears to confirm that the two knew each other. The blog also, it says, claims that many witnesses who gave testimony to the grand jury, which confirmed Officer Wilson's version of events, were threatened by the local Canfield Greens community. So basically, it looks like they killed this poor guy and set him on fire because he told the truth. Those are the peaceful protesters. Those are the ones who, you know, it's all about race, except for the fact that they just killed and burn up a black man for doing nothing than telling the truth. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. Still have three stories to get to, so please do not zone out. I just wanted to let you know that you want to go to the Arcadia Grill. It's located in downtown Canton. When you get there, let Maria know that Sam sent you. If you're anywhere near Canton, Ohio at all, make the drive. First of all, you're going to go to the bar and you're going to get yourself a drink. And it's going to be made correctly. There's going to be uh, alcohol in it, not just full of ice and pop or you know, bitters or whatever and no alcohol. Huh? They still put alcohol in their drinks. They're delicious. Um, also, some of the best ravioli rigatoni. They've got uh, Italian bread that is as fresh as you've ever eaten at the Arcadia Grill, Court Avenue, downtown Canton. 
Guys, I want to move on to uh, the next section uh, brought to you by Mike McLaughlin. You can find him on Facebook.com, Mike McLaughlin. He's an author and a poet, and he sells his stories. This is from USA Today. Police killings are the highest in two decades. Now, we could forget about uh, Ferguson for a minute. This is dated November the 12th. So those of you who are sick of both Fergies, the talentless singer and the uh, people fighting in uh, St. Louis, can listen to this. It's unrelated. The number of felony suspects fatally shot by police last year, 461, was the most in two decades, according to a new FBI report. The justifiable homicide count contained in the FBI's annual uniform crime report has become increasingly scrutinized in recent months as questions continue to be raised about the use of lethal force by law enforcement. Um, and again, there are some gray areas here. There, there was a shooting in Cleveland of a 12-year-old boy. I say it's a gray area because, I mean, I'm sorry I wasn't this stupid at 12. Uh, he pulled the toy gun on a cop and he had the orange thing popped off it that proves, you know, that it's a toy at the end. I, I, you take mine off. If somebody, in, you know, gave me a toy gun now, the first thing I do, probably take it off. It just looks stupid. Well, he pointed the gun at the cop. Who's to blame there? Um, I don't know. I, I almost wonder why uh, the, why the whole thing even happened the way it did. I, I can see both sides of the story. But we have SWAT teams going into homes for things like selling marijuana. We had a SWAT raid for taxes. So don't tell me that everyone that's getting this done to them has done some great crime, because that is not the case. And these SWAT teams are killing people, uh, scarring babies with uh, flash smoke grenades. I mean, it's out of control. It says, national attention has been drawn to the cases from New York to Albuquerque, though much of the focus is on Ferguson, Missouri, where the relative and we all know. Um, but it did say that the death of Michael Brown, again, it's unrelated to that, prompted weeks of protests. And what they have found, unfortunately, is that the police killings are the highest in the entire country, not in one section area. It just seems weird to me that the police have felt the need to kill that many people. But somehow all of the sheeple, all of the people have just become acclimated to this. I drove to work. I live I live like a 10-minute drive from where I work. I drove to work, and there was a cop that had somebody pulled over on the freeway, and then two cops on the exit that I went to. Doesn't it seem strange to you that three people within five miles have done something so grossly wrong while driving that they deserve to be pulled over and had hundreds of dollars taken from them. Doesn't that seem to, to you to be a bit uh, stretched? Well, not up here. I mean, and it's the same thing. Police are just knocking people off left and right, and people are marching for this thug brown, and it's making the cops look even more right. And the problem is that they are not right in many instances. And I wish that it wasn't happening in the name of a thug. That's what I wish. Uh, again, I'm not happy when anybody died. I'm not happy that he died. He just I can see why he died. Um, Christina Sarich, random acts of kindness can change a person's brain chemistry. I like this, particularly being uh, Thanksgiving officially here. Can't have all bad news here, so we're going to give you some wonderful news. It says, have you ever wondered if someone with even the hardest exterior could learn a sensitivity in love? A new study shows that we can be trained to feel compassion for others, just like when we learn many other skills. And I, there's a comment in this. I forget who left the comment, but you'll find it when you see the article. Um... He had said this doesn't apply to psychopaths. It would all depend. Uh, I guess psychopaths oftentimes are a result of extreme abuse. And uh, acts of kindness could, I imagine, if it is affecting the brain chemistry as we hear here, even help them. But listen to this. Researchers at the UV of Wisconsin Madison discovered human kindness is teachable. And what's more... It can change how the brain works, making acts of kindness in others and ourselves more commonplace. 
We've been told through the ages that we need to develop compassion for our fellow humans and other sentient creatures on this planet. But that emotional state has been difficult to pin down scientifically. Motivating altruistic behavior, that is kindness, in people is a big puzzle until now. Researchers at the Center for Investigating Healthy Minds at the Weissman Center of the University of Wisconsin-Madison has proven that adults can be trained to be more compassionate. It is one of the first studies of its kind to prove that training given to adults is compassionate behavior in more frequent bouts of altruistic behavior and changes in our neural systems that address compassion to, in fact, transpire. You know what I say. You know how to test this? You know how I'd like to see this tested beyond the, uh, the study here? Give prison inmates an extra five hours of rec time in any week, in any two weeks, if they go through this kindness thing and then see what their recidiv recidivism is, rate is upon those that went through it. That's how I would do it. It says, the full report is published online. It's at the uh, Psychological Science. There's a link here for that as well. It says, Helen Wang, W-E-N-G, a graduate student in clinical psychology and lead author of the paper, answered a fundamental question about whether or not we can train compassion into people. And she said, our evidence points to yes. Um, it says, in the study, the investigators trained young adults to engage in compassion meditation, an ancient Buddhist technique, and no, I'm not Buddhist, but doesn't mean they're wrong, to increase feelings of empathy and compassion for people who are stressed and suffering. Particip participants envisioned a time when someone had suffered and then practiced wishing that his or her suffering was relieved. They repeated phrases to help them focus these compassionate feelings, such as, may you be free from suffering and may you have joy and ease. It goes on that the participants in the study started with those who might be easiest to imagine being freed from their suffering, close family members or a dear friend. They then practiced expanding these compassionate feelings to a complete stranger and even themselves. Finally, they were trained to extend these feelings to a difficult person in their lives. Again, that could be very useful, particularly in people that are there for crimes regarding anger and a lack of compassion. Wang explained, it's kind of like weightlifting. Using this systemic approach, we found that people can actually build up their compassion muscle and respond to others' suffering with care and a desire to help. It says we wanted to investigate whether people could begin to change their emotional habits in a relatively short period of time. And it said they, found, they did. It said they found that people trained in compassion were more likely to spend their money altruistically, that is, with compassion, to help someone who, is, who was treated unfairly than those who were trained in cognitive reappraisal. We wanted to see what changed inside the brains of people who gave more to someone in need. So basically... The more you are kind, the better off your brain chemistry is. And in other science news on this show and on the Media Speaks, where I do news from the science front every Saturday, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, what you found is a healthy brain chemistry leads to a healthy life. And that, a lot of that goes into kindness. So that seemed to me to definitely be Thanksgiving-related and uh, we got the dumdy of the day. Thankfully, it's not Thanksgiving Day related. Uh, it is going to be Ferguson, but it's fine. You're going to want to hear this because it's the dumbest thing you've ever heard. Mikhail Thalen finds me so many good dumdies. Gawker, Ferguson rioters are helping the economy. Yeah, never mind the thing. They may be helping the insurance companies that are going to have to charge more in order to rebuild these businesses sometimes for the second time. It's going to be a big boon maybe for the construction companies that get these uh, big deals and uh, hire illegals. I don't know. But it is not a boon. It does say that it's good for the economy, for the poor lady that got her boutique burnt down. She owned, and her name escapes me, I'm sorry. She owned the biggest boutique in St. Louis that was African-American owned. And uh, her fellow man burned it to the ground. But, I mean, yeah, because it's good for a very small sect of the rebuilding population, it's, it's good for the economy. This 
is the dumb deal of the day. Destroying small businesses, burning cars, and shooting at firefighters is positive for the economy, says liberal website Gawker. Oh, yeah, because now they can take out loans that they can't afford to buy new cars and get deeper in debt and go bankrupt. Yeah, that's great. So because there'll be a spike in used car sales after this, the amount of people that will go bankrupt because they can't afford the car or get their car, their credit destroyed because they got the car repoed will not be factored in. And this bonehead will think he's right. Idiot! In an article entitled, quote, too dumb to even read, but I'm going to, actually riots are good, the economic case for riots in Ferguson. Salon writer, that's why they're never on the show, hardly ever, and Gawker contributor Matt Brunig makes the case that destroying the livelihood in those in your community actually produces benefits because it stops police from misbehaving. Yeah, because I'm sure so many police care what happens to another man's used car. I'm sure that the police won't know what to do without that boutique. Rioting that occurs in response to gross police misconduct and criminal system abuses imposes costs on doing those things, Brunig states. It signals to police authorities that they risk this sort of destructive mayhem if they continue on like this. What? If a cop defends himself? This is ridiculous. They'll be using it. They're every every thing that comes down the pike will be something to riot for because a lot of the people rioting are doing it just to get free stuff. It says that Brunig further gets the dumdy of the day by arguing that property linked to the criminal justice system would be even more beneficial to destroy as government officials would be forced to cover the costs. No, the government officials would not be paying. The taxpayer would be paying. And it would cost... Did you ever hear such a dumb sentence? Yeah, the mayor is going to use his money to build the, the courthouse back up, right? No. It's going to come out of the pockets of the taxpayers, you 